Before we talk about common collector amplifier, I'd like to talk about what that term means and what different types of amplifiers there are. So the, the amplifier that we've been looking at so far is called the common emitter amplifier. And it's this one here. And in the common emitter amplifier, we apply an input into the base through a capacitor. And that wiggles the base voltage up and down a little bit, causing the collect the base current to go back and forth. And that gets amplified uh, by the transistor into a current going through this collector. And then this voltage goes up and down. And then we take the output off of the collector. So on a common emitter amplifier, the input goes on the base, the output comes off of the collector, and the emitter is taken to an AC ground point through a capacitor. By tying this point to ground through a capacitor, the DC voltage isn't grounded. It can still sit at about a 3 volt DC value, but if there's any AC signal here, that's going to get shorted to ground. So this is taken to an AC ground point or an AC common point, hence the term common emitter. Today we're going to start a circuit called the common collector. In the common collector, the input is applied to the base again through a capacitor, and the output is taken off of the emitter. The collector is tied directly to the power supply, which is a DC source. But when we thevenize this circuit, we're going to take that DC source and we're going to tie it to ground. And so this will be an AC ground point. So the collector has been taken to an AC common point. The last one, and we probably won't do much with this circuit, let's call it a common base circuit. So you set up the DC bias point with a couple of re resistors that create a voltage divider, and that gets the DC current going. And then you ground the base through a capacitor to ground, so that this is an AC ground point. So the base is grounded to an AC common point, hence common base. The input is applied to the emitter, and then this is wiggled, and then current, if this is grounded, when this wiggles up and down, it pulls current through the base emitter which gets amplified and we see that a voltage output on the, on the collector. So common indicates which terminal in the transistor is taken to an AC common point. The common collector amplifier, I kind of already showed you a quick schematic of that one, looks like this here. And although it's a different configuration, we solve it using the same old method. So although it's different, we don't really need to memorize any new formulas. We just need to, to apply the same method uh, to the circuits that we did with common emitter. So the first thing that you do is you redraw the base drive circuit by thevenizing it into an equivalent voltage and resistance. So you redraw, take these two guys and put them in parallel and figure out the thevenin voltage and you redraw it as a base drive circuit. Once you have that, you can solve for IB using KVL. So here I've got an RTH 3872, BTH is 16.4, so that's this voltage and resistance. Now I can do this loop. So if I take that voltage and I subtract that one, that's the voltage across these two resistors. If I move that over there, I would get IB. So BTH minus 0.7 over RTH plus beta plus 1 times RE. You could probably drop the plus 1 because beta is fairly large at 150, and it won't make much difference. You put in your known values, you come out with a base current, 594 microns. Once we've got base current, we can multiply that by beta to get collector current of 89.2 milliamps. And then you can find the emitter current by multiplying it by beta plus 1. 151 times 594 is 89.8 milliamps. You could also add up these two values 0.6 milliamps plus 89.2 is going to come up to 89.8. And now that we've got the currents, we can figure out the voltages. So let's see here. We know what these currents are. Uh, this is 20 volts. If I know the current through this guy, I can figure out the voltage across the transistor. So VCE, the voltage across the transistor, is going to be the supply voltage minus IERE, which is the voltage across that resistor. So 20 minus 151 times 89.8 milliamps gets you about 6.5 volts. So now we've got our Q point. We've got our combination of voltage and current uh, on the load line. Now we need to figure out the ends of the load line. 
So we solve for IC and IE. We solve for VRC and VCE. Now we're finding the saturation current. IC sat. Again, the method is the same. You consider this transistor to be shorted, and you figure out how much current would be going through it if it was a short, which would be 20 volts over 150. So 20 volts over 150 is 132 milliamps. To find VCE off, you pull the transistor out, and you look at what the voltage would be across its terminals, which would be 20 volts. So here's the ends of our load line. We plunk those down. We draw a straight line between them. And then we can plot the Q point on the load line. Find DC cutoff, draw Q point on the load line.